Welcome back to Feed the Post. I'm your host, Joe Jackson, and we are starting our Big Ten preview series. Today is team number one, and that is the Ohio State Buckeyes. I am joined by former Ohio State player and the holder of the third best three-point percentage in the 2017-18 season during Big Ten play, Joey Lane. <laughs> Joey, how are you doing today? Wow, uh, I'm great now. What an unbelievable stat. What? So 2017-2018 season would have been my junior year, I think. Three shots. 67 or 66.6 percent uh during conference play and that was third there was two guys that took like one three and made it and that yeah. were those who you were behind interesting i can't even th- i i don't even know of uh, not and this doesn't i only i don't know of a miss i don't know of another shot or another opportunity <laughs> i know my two makes so that's interesting i i'll take that though any day of the week i love love that stat that's that's huge huge yes yeah. yeah exactly exactly so um, appreciate you coming on. We're going to talk about Ohio State. Um, we'll just kind of jump right in, obviously. So, you know, Ohio State comes off a disappointing season, to say the least, 5-15 and 15 in the conference, 13-18 uh, and 18 overall. Pretty good start. And then, honestly, just, you know, some injuries. I th- I personally think just some bad luck contributes uh, to it to it all. Um, did show signs in March, right? Finishing, or winning five of their last seven. They won three in the Big Ten tournament, I believe. Um, so what are you just your kind of overall thoughts on last season um, and then maybe just like a brief, you know, kind of overview of what your thoughts are for the upcoming season? Yeah, I'm, I'm Joe, I'm sick and tired of talking about last season. You know, I'm, I'm, Fair glad, to, I'm glad to come on this show and get to talk about this coming season. But no, I mean, the thoughts are it was a young team. It was never. Obviously, the coaching staff w- wants to compete and thinks every team is going to compete, but obviously they're they're not dumb either and they knew that there was possibilities of it being a rebuilding year of sorts did anyone envision a nine game losing streak in big 10 play no but like you were saying a lot of those games were like ot losses on the road at Rutgers and one shot games and ball bounces this way or that way and uh, you know it all started with a terrible turnover by justice suing against purdue so i mean it um it all could have been way different um but yeah you know some bad luck and some the overarching theme of the season was a lot of the guys on Ohio state were not as good as we anticipated they would be, whatever the case may be. They might've been a little hurt. They might've not been as talented as anticipated, et cetera, et cetera. Um, That's that season is hindsight. It's done. And now it's uh, I would be a fool to not mention the fact that it's probably there's elements of winner go home for coach Holtman and this staff. Uh, if they don't have a very successful year, then the argument could be made that it's time to to move on. And I would hate that with all my heart, but also understand it at the same time. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's an exciting year that's coming. And I'm excited to talk about uh, what I think about this team. Yeah, I just have, you know, two two quick pieces on the last season. And that's they did go two and seven in games decided by five or less. I'm kind of the belief that, like, in general, those should be roughly 50 50, maybe like 64. You know, if you have like, Tom Izzo is your coach. You're probably winning more like 60, 40, whatever, yeah. but two and seven in those, which isn't great. Um, and then per Ken Palm, 361st in luck, um, <laughs> the third unluckiest yeah. team. And it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's a mathematical formula based on like what he, you know, what's expected in that, but they were expected to do a lot better. I mean, they were still, I believe top 50 in Ken Palm. I believe they were 49. So like, even with the losses still, there's still reason to believe that this team, could be good and they bring back some of their key pieces for this year so um you know and i think as we kind of jump into this year we'll talk about the offense in a bit because i think the offense is going to be good i think like that's just you know that's what holman does he he has good offenses the big thing is going to be the defensive end right like they were 106 i believe in defense per ken palm last year um yeah 106 wasn't a great effort at all times and the biggest thing was just like just just some miscommunications, things like that. But like there's a bit of a personnel change, I think. What are you kind of looking at specifically on the defensive end for, for the Buckeyes this year? Yeah, I think that Ohio State defense got better down the stretch because Felix Akpara was playing more. Um, you know, loves that key to pieces. Great guy. He's a great basketball player too and has shown it in stretches, but he doesn't have the same impact that Felix Akpara has. Uh, and as you know very well, being a rim protector doesn't just mean you are blocking shots and that literally is defending the basket. Uh, he's also good in ball screen and got a lot better and contests a lot of shots that he's no business contesting. 
But as a perimeter defender, you also know that you can play a little bit harder maybe because you know that Felix is behind you. And, I mean, he he had to have led the conference and block shots down the stretch. I mean, it probably wasn't even that close. So he set the freshman single-season record and barely played. So yeah. um, that's one thing that I, I, I look for defense this year. I also think personnel-wise, you're right. You know, like Roddy Gale wasn't playing a ton, um, but then he starts to play a lot more. And he's the best perimeter defender probably on the team. And, oh, wow, the defense gets a little bit better. Um, so I look at um, Chris Holman as a defensive-minded coach who hasn't necessarily, uh, since my junior year, which would have been his first year, hasn't had a dominant defensive team. I mean, my next year, that would have been his second year. Uh, we were terrible, but we were good because uh, we could guard the ball. And as a team, played really good team defense. And even in games that we had no business competing in, we kept it fairly close and had a chance to win a lot of games and won a lot of games because we were good on defense. Um, and Chris Holman's always been a guy that's done, done more with less, but now he's got more. So how can he get these guys that aren't necessarily his prototypical Chris Holtman, Butler style, grinded out defensive guys to uh, buy in on the defensive end is going to be really interesting. Uh, he's got a great group of guys this year, guys that not only – have played Big Ten basketball, but they know Holtman's system, right? It's not the the pack line sort of defense is not how these long athletic guys want to play. But when played uh, well, like like Purdue does a lot of times, um, when played well, it's really hard to score on. Um, I, I do feel like you know there will be some significant changes in how Ohio State operates this year on the defensive end. Um, what that looks like. I'm not, I'm in no position to sort of tell you, right. I, I, you know, I'm not a coach on the coaching staff. Um, I just know that they're too good on offense with two great of pieces with two, with two good of guys that, that have bought in and have proven that they're willing to buy in um, for it to not go that way. So um, yeah, the, the defense has stunk for a long time and it's about time that we write the ship. Yeah. A hundred percent. And you know, I think I just think as I watched back some of the games recently, like the biggest thing that just stood out was just um, just off ball awareness at times just wasn't great. Uh, you know, I uh, Ohio State was in the bottom like 15 and against cuts like they were just just a bad defense against cuts, um, things like that. And as I mean, I I absolutely loved watching Bryce Sensball play basketball, yeah. but like, you know, you lose him, you lose. Offense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You lose <laughs> him. Even suing kind of fits that boat, I think, too. Like, yeah. I'm not saying that you're like happy to see them go, but like, you know, now it's, you can bring in guys maybe that are a little bit more better on the defensive end. And then you figure it out on the offensive end. And I thought that's what I, I really liked Holman's off season. Like, you know, he brings in Bonner from uh, Dale Bonner from Baylor. He's a, you know, point of point of attack defender. He's going to get into ball handlers at a pretty high steal rate in limited minutes. Bring in Evan Mahaffey is just like a six, six, you know, kind of guard at some point guarded one through five for Penn state yeah. last year. Like really good upside there, and then the freshman Middleton, he's been getting a lot of buzz. I like his game; like he could be a legitimate three and D player. So, like, I like bringing in those guys. It's more defensive personnel, and then yeah, you hit on the two guys that I'm I'm like when I rewatched, I was like, oh man, like they're legit, and that's Gale and Akpara. Like, Gale just made such a difference defensively. He's definitely the best perimeter defender, and then I'm like I'm all in on Akpara. Um, you know, he had a eight point, I think like an 8.8 .8 block rate, which was the second highest. It would have been like the 27th highest in the country if he just played a few more minutes. Um, and then another interesting thing was like team shot 8% worse at the rim when he was in the game compared to off. Uh, just, you know, just lanky dude, really good timing, really good instincts. Like if he can keep it up, um, you know, and can eventually get to like maybe closer to like 30 minutes a game or something like I don't see why he can't make an all Big Ten defense team in his career, if not win Big Ten defense player of the year. Like, yeah. I think there's that much upside. Yeah, I, I, we've talked about it on our show a few times that the difference between Felix and Zed is proven to be very, very small, I think. And who gives you a better chance to win? Again, as much as I love Zed, and he is a fin phenomenal basketball player. I really do think so. And he hasn't even been close to his best. The dude had... 20 and 10 against Duke, Mark against Mark Williams. But Felix Akpara gives you a better chance to win basketball games, especially in the Big Ten. Uh, he's better on defense against the big guys. Uh, he's proven to be a threat 
uh, at the rim with lobs. Um, he has a very raw but decent post game, and I mean he's just unbelievable on defense, which you already talked about. He does so much more than just block shots, but uh, he disrupts things at a really really high level. And I'm uh, I wouldn't be shocked if he starts the season on the bench, but I would be very shocked if he doesn't finish a lot of games this year. Um, but you talked about the newcomers. Um, I do think Coach Holt made a concerted effort to uh, attack the weaknesses uh, of the team, and that is, you know, we we knew Bruce Thornton is going to be a top five point guard, hopefully this year. But who's going to play when he's not in? Dale Bonner. I've heard nothing but unbelievable things so far uh, from this summer workouts. Uh, also, coming from a winning program doesn't hurt as well, which Coach Holtman holds to a very very high standard. Um, you know, the freshmen are great. They're, they're freshmen. So we'll see what happens, but we've had freshmen come in. Uh, I think about Luther Muhammad come in right away, start play a ton of minutes and guard the best player every single night. I don't see why Scotty Middleton can't do that. Um, and then, yeah, I, uh, Mahaney's awesome. Uh, I'm excited about him because we lacked that sort of energy type guy last year. And I keep saying we, I'm trying to get out of the habit of doing that, but on this You're show. like one of the true true guys that could say it though. Like you, right. you were literally on the team at one point. Right, but it's it's not good business in the sports media world Fair. to we. So I'm trying to, to work on that. But no, you know, at the end of the day, what me and Coach Holtman talked about uh, a lot the past two years is it as important as it is to have NBA guys like EJ Liddell and Malachi Branham and Bryce Sensible and like that, that's great. But in order to win at a really high level in the Big Ten, you need to have phenomenal college basketball players as well. And, you know, Kata bates the was that NBA guy, right? But we had Jay Sean Tate, and you had Cam Williams, uh, and you had these guys that were phenomenal uh, college players like Caleb Wesson and Kyle Young and the, all these guys that um, we haven't really had a guy like that uh, lately. So I, I feel like – between the three transfers that we got, uh, one of those three immediately, if not two, uh, are phenomenal college basketball players that, who knows, if they get a shot at the NBA, awesome. But, like, you know, Battle and Bonner are going to be immediate, high-level, impact-winning type transfers. Um, yeah. and, and that's who I, I mean, I'm excited for uh, us to fit, have that, 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 that puzzle piece filled where – you need you need really good college basketball players in order to win Big Ten championships and go to Sweet Sixteens, et cetera. And we haven't have, haven't had that the past few years. Yeah, yeah, and I think the battle one's interesting too, right? Like I don't think he was great defensively, which is why I didn't bring him up in that kind of intro to that question. But I I it kind of felt like Holtman was like, all right, you lose Justice Suing, and then just like, all right, let's just go get. Uh, just assuming that shoots a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> like, and so they went out and got Jameson battle. And that was, I was pretty low on battle last year. Like I was, I think pretty objectively, he had a, you know, not great season, obviously on the Minnesota squad. But then as I kind of talked through it more with some people and like uh, thought about it, it's like, Oh yeah, no, this is like a perfect system for battle. He's going to be given the opportunity, you know, Holman loves these threes, fours that can kind yeah. of just create their own stuff. He does a really good job of putting them in driving lanes. Battle needs to be better about finishing at the rim. Um, but he's going to just have better looks. So I'm, I'm interested to see where he could always, where he goes with that too this year. Um, and we, we so we kind of hit on it already with the Akpara key thing. I think that's going to be a bigger storyline for yeah. Ohio State, at least to start the year. Um, you know, you kind of mentioned that you think Akpara eventually takes it. I, I think personally, I'm pretty, I'm team start Akpara because then you can bring key off the bench and kind of lead that second unit, but also like, it's like he's been a three-year starter. Like it's hard to take that away. What are your kind of – I know you kind of talked about it a bit, but what are your yeah. kind of thoughts specifically on it all? Yeah, I just think knowing Holtman that it's Zed's job until proven otherwise. Um, but he, again, a theme, is no dummy, and he's going to play whoever gives him a better chance to win. And I think he knows that that's Felix. I think that if you give a rising sophomore the starting job, this early in a sense, like give him the keys to the car, even though the center never gets the keys to the car. But, you know, in theory, his mindset could be different than if he is fighting every single day to be the starter. Um, I, 
I want to push back on your thought of Zed Key leading the second group because in an ideal world, there's no second groups in college basketball, right? Yeah. So yeah, um, and I know I know you meant something differently than you know than if he was playing yeah, yeah. New York Knicks and coming off the bench and playing with literally four other guys, right? Um, but I see Zed as a great offensive weapon that you can bring off the bench, right? A guy that. You know, if Jamison Battle is out and Bruce Thornton doesn't have his fastball and Roddy Gale's not making shots and whatever the case may be, right, you can roll the ball into Zed Key in the post. And if he's getting doubled, great. That's going to get somebody an open shot. If he's not, he's going to score one-on-one with just about every single player in the country. I truly believe that. Um, So my thoughts are that the only thing – that's keeping me a little hesitant. I would say Zed was absolutely starting if he didn't, if he wasn't coming off shoulder surgery, but yeah. um, I do think Zed's going to start, but I do think that whether whoever starts, they're both going to be playing 20 to 25 minutes, right? That That's yeah. going to be, it's either going to be 25 and 15 or 20 and 20 or flip flop depending on the matchup, right? You know, feel like maybe, you know, better equipped to guard Zach Eady, but he's going to get three fouls in the first five minutes of the game. So, you know, just trying to work that all into play. I also, there's rumors and Zed wants this and I don't know how Felix feels about this, but they want to play together. There's no way that happens. Um, that would be a disaster. That would be like the Kentucky from three years ago where John Cal Perry is like forcing two seven footers out there and that, you know, they're being run out of the gym and, you know, you, if you can't shoot a three pointer, you can't play the four in, in college basketball anymore. So yeah, um, yeah that that's not going to happen, but, I'm again as big of a Zed fan as you'll find. I just don't think that, um, uh, unfortunately, he unless he proves something differently, the impact that Felix has on the defensive end is just so unique. And in a in a conference, especially that has some of the best big men in the country year in and year out, um, the center position is so important, especially stopping those centers. And Felix just I mean, is as good of a guy doing that, and he proved it in the last you know seven games of the year last year. Yeah, and I will say like, I'm uh, this is I'm not trying to like slander Zed because I, I know, think I, know. I try. I'm no, I know you are. Not, I, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I no, no, no. But I'm more just saying like, um, like this is a good predicament for them to have. Like, yeah, you you know whether you start a car or key like, I'm trying to think through really quick so I'm not like completely forgetting anybody. But aside from Purdue, maybe like they'll have the best backup big in the entire conference. Um, what and yeah. it doesn't matter which one, right? You know, and so like that's you know, and now it's although I you know, I think we both are in agreement that Akpar raises the ceiling, like there's gonna be games like you said, Key's just gonna have to go get 15 points. And like, mm-hmm. okay, Key, you're you know, you're playing 25 minutes today. Like that's a that's gonna be a good thing to have for sure. And provide a little bit of depth that when he was hurt that they just lacked, you know, Ohio State was playing uh, what was UG Eugene Brown at the five for a while and stuff. And yeah. Um, so I'm excited to see how it works. I'm excited to see both of them. Um, but, and then from the bigs, like we've spent, you know, we've been here for about 20 minutes, haven't talked about probably, or arguably Ohio state's best player last year, depending on how you look at it. When Bruce Thornton, um, yeah. comes off a- averaging 10.6 points, 2.7 rebounds, 2.6 assists, uh, shot 37.5% from three, 50% from two, just like efficient all around. Um, and now, you know, you mentioned top five point guard in the big 10. I think that's pretty consensus. It seems, you know, there's the top three in, uh, Bowie, uh, Hogard and and Young, and then it's Smith and Smith and Thornton or four or five, whatever order you want to put them. What do you kind of expect from him to take? You know, he already showed that he could do it as a freshman. Yeah. Now he's going into sophomore year, a year that generally gets a big jump. Uh, what are you kind of thinking that jump could be like for him? Yeah, I mean, there's no question that in college basketball, your team goes as your point guard goes, or as the guy handling the ball goes, right? Um, you think about every team that's won the Big Ten, maybe outside of Purdue last year, and that's no offense to Brain Smith, but like they've had an not only like an all league point guard, but like an all American caliber point guard. Um, and this the next step for Bruce Thornton is you know, 10 points a game and two assists is great, but uh, he's gonna have to carry a little bit of a heavier scoring load, he's gonna be playing, um, you know, more than. 25, 30 minutes a game, and he's going to have to have not an all-American type season, but a second-team all-Big Ten type season if they want, if Ohio State wants to achieve, 
you know, their goals. And that comes with what he does a great job of is not turning the ball over. He had a few bad games, but he does a great job of taking care of the basketball and uh, leading the team. I mean, last year he had a ton of older guys to be the voice, but this year uh, I can guarantee you that he is the voice in every single huddle. And he was, um, you know, it's funny because he was Mr. Basketball in Georgia, but not even in the second highest rated player coming out of high school for the recruiting class last year. It was Roddy Gale and Bryce Sensible. So, um, you know, Bruce is, is a budding point guard. I think that he proved it, like you said, a lot last year of what could happen. And it's more than capable of going out and give you 20 any single night. Um, I think it becomes more of a threat from the three point line. His mid range game is so good. He's, he's, Average, and you probably have the stats to back it up around the rim. Um, but he, yeah. but he is so good in that mid post, mid range floater pull ups where he doesn't need to get to the rim. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that it all comes with leadership, which you can't quite, you know, give any sort of quantitative answer there. But uh, his leadership is going to have to take a step up, and then I really do think his scoring is going to have to take a step up uh, as well. Yeah. I actually, I was looking and I thought he wasn't great. He was actually in the 88th percentile at the rim. Um, there you go. All right. Also, he probably didn't shoot a ton of layups. So, yeah, he only took he only took 54 shots at the rim all year. Yeah. So, a little what, a little under two a game, something like he's that. Also underratedly athletic. Like he looks like a short little fat point guard, but he's but he's not. He's, he's like a running back. He's very underratedly yeah. athletic, and I know his body has gotten a lot better this off season as well. Okay. I mean, yeah, that's the Ohio State. Like that was just the lineup last year with like likely and all the, just linebackers everywhere. Yeah. Um, How'd that work out really well? True. <laughs> One little thing on Thorne before we move on. Cause like, as I watched, I couldn't, I had, I really struggled being like, okay, what kind of defender is Thorne? Is he a good defender on a bad defense? Is he okay? But like his flaws get exposed because of what's around him. Like do you, we don't have to go long on this, but like, do you have, kind of a better insight maybe on, on what you you trust with him defensively or not? Yeah, I, I do think that he is a good defender. I think okay. that he he's not Dale Bonner in the sense that he's gonna, you know, you know, get a get up India a little bit more, maybe right. He's he's very smart. He's very calculated. I, I know that he gets Holman's system, right? I just he doesn't jump off the page in athleticism. He's not in your face. He's not anything that would jump off the, your TV screen to tell you he's a great defender, but uh, you know, probably calling him a solid defender on a bad defensive team is probably a good way of phrasing it. I would think. Okay. That was kind of what I got to, like he was making some, he was making pretty good plays. It was just like, some some pick and rolls person, you know, so yeah, for sure. We're going yeah. to improve all that. Yeah. Um, last, you know, just a couple more things and then we'll, we'll get out of here. We kind of mentioned all the, I think we had, we mentioned five of the newcomers at this point, battle Bonner, Mahaffey, um, Middleton. Oh, so we've only mentioned four. The other three freshmen, Tayson Chapman, Devin Royal, and Austin Parks. I'm super high on Tayson Chapman. Um, his scoring ability, I think he's a legitimate three level scorer from day one. Like, just, and I, and it does have to translate, obviously, to the Big Ten, all that stuff. And um, not saying he'll be amazing right away because, you know, freshman, whatever. But just the balance that he played with in high school, things like that, I, I fully buy him as a scorer. Um, do you have, you know, whether it be Chapman or Middleton, like, or any of the other newcomers that we've kind of already talked about, like who do you think you're most excited for or makes the biggest impact out of the seven newcomers? Yeah. You know, fortunately I feel like Ohio state kind of has four positions set in stone, which is a good, good, good thing to have. But that third position is probably going to be, you know, that three spot, four spot, however you want to play Jamison battle. And it's going to probably be the best freshman and uh, whoever, contributes in the correct way you know the mixing sort of puzzle piece for those five uh and i think it's going to be one of three which is not obviously very very unique in me saying but you know we already talked about middleton great defender you know yeah. upside athletically can shoot the ball a little bit right yeah uh, people are very high on him i think he's going to be great i do think that chapman can contribute quicker i think he's more ready i think offensively he gives you more um, I also know that um, the coaches are very high on him because essentially we took him instead of Brownie James. So um, you have to imagine that uh, he's a pretty dang good basketball player if, if that was the case. And that's not to say that Brownie committed to Ohio State and we said, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just telling you that on the same visit as Brownie, Taysom Chapman was there that weekend as well. 
Um, okay. As far as Devin Royal goes, everyone's going to be clamoring for him right away because, first of all, he's awesome, but also yeah. because he's from Columbus and everyone's been – uh, watching him year in and year out, he's been at every single home game for the last like two or three seasons, you know, and oh, wow. I do think one of those three guys will fit that extra spot and will do a really good job. Maybe it's a combination of two guys, right? Chapman and Chapman and his, his offense, Scotty Middleton on defense, whatever the game calls for, right? Um, yeah. You know, Austin Parks, unfortunately, like we already talked about, is playing behind maybe the best, you know, one-two punch in the Big Ten behind Purdue. So, um you know, he'll, he'll be a great punching bag in practice. I'm sure he'll punch back a lot as well. And it'll be really good for Zed and Felix to have that guy on scout team um, going mm-hmm. against every single day. I mean, I remember when I was at Ohio state, the, our big men were going against Greg Oden every single day in practice, which is pretty darn good to go against as well. Uh, and it for worked sure. out, worked out pretty well for Caleb Wesson. So um, I'm sure it will for, for those guys as well. So um, yeah, I, I would say my gut tells me big 10 ready in order, it's Taysom Chapman, Scotty Middleton, Devin Royal. And that's not to say that all three aren't very close. I think they are. Uh, I haven't watched as much film on a lot of those guys. I just see a lot of highlights. I just go off of um, kind of what I've heard from the coaching staff, essentially. Yeah. And uh, uh, Taysom Chapman is is exciting. I, he's, he's cool. He is smooth. He keeps to himself. He is uh, – I – if I had to pick one guy to win Big Ten Freshman of the Year, it's going to be him, right? Like of yeah. of, of those guys, you know, who has the yeah. best opportunity to. Um, it could have been a three-peat if we were just picking the best freshman, but we weren't. We were picking the, the best freshman on, on a better team, which I understand last year. So, um, yeah, it, it'll be interesting because all three of those guys will get an opportunity without a doubt. Yeah, you kind of – you stole, stole my thunder a little bit, but if – if Chapman, like if Chapman gets the starting job and is like consistently there, he's my sleeper for Big Ten freshman of the year. Like I think he can just contribute that much right away. Um, yeah, no, I'm excited for I'm excited for all of them. Austin Parks, like you said, I you know I wouldn't even be shocked if he like I don't know if he'll redshirt or anything, but yeah, not going to see much. Royals, obviously the hometown kid. Um, don't have too much more. Last like long or longer question, and then just sure. a short one to get out of here. You, we kind of already talked about Holman. You kind of mentioned like, hey, this maybe he's on the hot seat. Like, do you think it's kind? Do you think it's like solid season or fire? And if so, like, what do you think that threshold is? Of and yeah, I'm obviously, it's just speculating on job security. But yeah, yeah, yeah it's interesting because we also have a new AD coming in, um, which sometimes an AD comes in and it's like, see you to everybody, and sometimes they're like. Well, I trusted the old AD, so this guy I'm sure is good. You know, Holman just got an extension. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to not, like, use any sort of bias or personal feelings towards him or anything For like sure. that. I just know that he is – the grass isn't always greener, right? I don't think that there are many guys out there that can do the job that he has done and will do. I mean, he – the endorsements that he gets from guys like Jay Wright and Tom Izzo and like those guys don't have to say that stuff. Right. So um, a good season, I think is a good season is competing in the big 10. You know, you fit, you get that one by, maybe it's a double by um, and you win a game in the NCAA tournament, you make it and win a game in the NCAA tournament. A great season is getting a double by and making the sweet 16. I think that's a great season. I think that hundred percent keeps Holman around without a doubt. Um, you know, if they go any, if they win the big 10 regular season or tournament that keeps them around, if they don't do that, but then make the sweet 16, that keeps them around. Right. There's a lot of different, a lot of different elements to that. Um, it it is funny because, um, and I will name drop a bit here, but, um, I was at a wedding a couple weeks ago, um, that Jay Wright was at, and I had met him at an Ohio state game, um, the year prior that he was calling. And I introduced myself and said, Hey, Coach Holman told me to make sure I said hello to you. Um, you know, I am friends with the guy you coached, blah, blah, blah. We talked mm-hmm. quickly, but he either did a really good job faking it or actually is an incredible guy and remembered um, me from from meeting me briefly that time. And we talked about Holman and he, I mean, Jay Wright went through the exact same thing that Coach Holman is going through. Uh, had some good early seasons, roller coaster, uh, guys wanted him out. 
couldn't make couldn't make runs in the big in in the in the NCAA tournament. Right, could only win one game or zero games. Couldn't get to a Sweet Sixteen. All of a sudden, he does it once, and he wins two national championships in three years. And it's like, you know, if we gave, goats. yeah, if we, exactly. If we gave these coaches more time, I, I think that it is the grass isn't always greener. You know, look at the guys that have been in the Big Ten the longest: Tom Izzo and Matt Painter. Like, they have down years also. I mean. Izzo literally never does, but, um, yeah. you know, it's it, it, we're in this weird sort of element of college football and basketball where, like, you need immediate success, and that's just impossible. It's just, I mean, in the NBA and the NFL, it's a little bit different because everybody's – they've got pros, right? So it's a little bit yeah. different, but I just – I pray that no matter how the season goes that he's our coach again the following year because I truly believe in him and – his system and what he brings to the table and, and the the program that he has built and will continue to build. And, you know, he just keeps getting these incredible players too. Like it, that is not easy. Like, you know, like that's why Mata got fired. Like he was not getting guys anymore. Coach Holman's getting these guys year in and year out. So we'll see. Uh, I'm excited for this year. I know that there is a, uh, a lot riding on this year, including my happiness and well being. So um, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And then also, you know, the other thing with Holtman and keeping his job is like, he's just absolutely on fire in the recruiting trail right now. Um, yeah. So that's got to help a little bit too. Yeah. All right. Two quick questions. Sure. You, know, you can, this first one, you could just do, you know, one name. Um, and obviously there's going to be a lot of names that you want to say, but who are you most excited for on this team next year? One player. Um, Bruce Thornton. Bruce Thornton. Mine would be Felix Akpara. Um, I almost did Roddy Gale, but Akpara would be mine. And then, you know, last question, kind of two-parter. Ohio State has this good season. You know, they make the Sweet 16 or whatever that the case may be. Um, if that, if I told you that happens, what are you think? What are some of the things you're like? Oh yeah, this happened for sure. Then, and vice versa. If it's a bad season, it's like okay, then probably this happens. Um, if it's a really good season, I think that everything that happened towards the end of last year kind of continued, and then the other guy, the the pieces that Coach Holman added kind of fell in place properly, right? Bruce Thornton was the guy. Roddy Gale was was a great scoring punch, hitting a ton of threes, and Felix Akpara was a beast, you know? And then James Abel came in and averaged 15 points a game, and Dale Bonner gave you a great 10, 15 minutes off the bench. And, you know, the freshmen, two out of the four freshmen contributed at a really high level. That, that would be what I would foresee for um, a successful season. If it wasn't a su- successful season – I, I really do think that the center position and the point guard position are are, are going to be solid. I, I really, truly believe that. Whether it's Zed and Felix, you know, who, whoever it is, and then Bruce plus Bonner, those are good. If it's not a successful season, there are major question marks for the 2-3-4 spot. Whether it's Jameson Battle wasn't as good as we thought he was going to be, which that has happened with transfers at Ohio State in the past. Or the freshmen were not ready and they can – Holtman was forced to play some of them in big minutes, which he did not want to do. Um, or Mahaffey was Mahaffey was not at all what we thought he was. He was trying to do too much, and Holtman couldn't play him, right? And then, you know, maybe it's Roddy Gale. We expect so much of Roddy Gale, but he really is just an eight-and-a-half point a game scorer that only shoots threes, which I, that's not true. But, you know, that's what I foresee is maybe what could go wrong. Um you know, I do feel very bullish about this year. So we should. I'm, I'm with you on that. Like, if they, I don't know, I, I don't have like full like preseason rankings out or anything, but I'm pretty confident they'll be somewhere in the three to five for me. Um, yeah. I'm pretty, I'm pretty high in them. Off of the worst year that I can. I've been an Ohio State fan my whole life. I literally can't remember besides my sophomore year. I can't remember a, a worse year. So um, that's crazy. I. Man, saying we're going to get a bye preseason would be so cool, but so crazy to me. I, I like the – I want them to be in that, you know, five to eight sweet spot where they have expectations but not too many expectations. That's like the selfish, like, basketball player in me there. That's fair enough. So, yeah, I don't really have much to add on the good and bad. Like, I think you nailed it. Good is everybody fits. Bad is, you know, some people just don't – probably don't buy into the defensive system and then maybe just a little bit of shooting regression as they did shoot really well last year. So – yeah, no, that's I. Um, that's all I really got. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, one, oh, I do actually have, I have one little note that I did want to say. Yeah. This is a team that um, the only two players that they'll lose for sure after this year is Bonner and Battle. That he could come back. He has his COVID year if he wants it. 
and then as of right now and obviously it's, you know transfer portal all that stuff so it probably won't happen as of right now the next season's team like they could they are on track to lose nobody from that team um, they would return all current 11 players just something interesting kind of related to the holtman thing of like what he's building um if they're you know it could be solid this year good the following year and then they they return everybody one more year after that so appreciate you coming on joey uh, let everybody know where they can find you and your stuff yeah absolutely so at joey smoke 11 uh or now i'm 14 joey smoke 14 <laughs> uh on twitter uh the joey lane on instagram the joey lane on tiktok i'll be bringing the tiktoks back come come hoop season um uh, at Drive the Lane Pod is my podcast with my co-host Andrew Zolden, who, if you ever need a uh, more entertaining and less analytical episode, he is a, a great guy for that. Um, love that guy. So, um, yeah, appreciate you, Joe, is always having me on. It's always a blast. You know, I don't get to do very many shows where it's less, yes, I'm giving you my opinion, but I always love that you are very much rooted in facts uh, and, and, and analytics and stats, and that's something that I – you know, we've talked about a little bit behind the scenes that I want to get better at. And, and, uh, so I appreciate your insights and always very helpful and always very fun. Yeah. I appreciate that. That's, that's kind of what I'm trying to bring with feed the post more of the, um, you know, analytical side and, and video breakdown to for the big 10 specifically. So, um, you can find me on, uh, on audio on Spotify, Apple, and Google podcasts at feed the post. If you're watching on YouTube, you made it this far, please like, and subscribe. Going to be having some fun videos come out besides just these team previews. Going to be doing a team preview, um, two a week for the next seven weeks. And then we'll have a couple of just like fun, fun ones right before the season starts. So um, please like, and subscribe, just trying to grow that and, you know, going to keep, keep grinding at this. It's, it's been fun. I'm enjoying it. So um, also just can't wait for basketball to be here about two and a half months. It, it, it needs to get here. Um, appreciate everybody tuning in and we'll catch you in the next one.